Your Houston Morning News with Matt Patrick continues. Okay, Terry, news time is 616. Joining me right now is Stacy Alfin. She's with Herman Memorial. And uh, you are a patient, you are with the Patient Recovery Center and uh, an expert on recovery. And Stacey, you and I just had a chance to talk off air. I've been very honest with my audience. I'm a recovering alcoholic. Uh, mm-hmm. My sobriety date is coming up here in just about uh, a few days. Great. Congratulations. I'm, thank you. Uh, and I began drinking when I was about 11 years old, sneaking, okay. bo- sneaking booze out of my dad's bar. Now, I drank it the normal way. Uh, I'm reading this story. This is a huge story about how teenagers are ingesting alcohol and they're finding ways to ingest it and get it right into their bloodstream and we can't smell it on their breath. Is this something new? Um, actually, I think it just goes along with how creative um, people that want to experience getting high or feeling loaded, um, the lengths that they will go to in order to have that happen. Um, I think what we're seeing more and more is the, the, the creativity of our youth, unfortunately, in all the wrong ways, uh, and the myth that goes along with that, which is they, they assume that no one can smell the alcohol, just like most of the time people think that, oh, you can't smell vodka. Well, I have bad news. You can smell vodka. Yes, you can. And regardless as to how they decide to um, ingest that, it's going to come out through the lungs if they get enough because the body is trying to, you know, get rid of everything that it can. So eye drops, uh, gummy bears, uh, some have gone so far as to use uh, feminine hygiene products. I I mean, it's bizarre to me, and and this is is a way to get the the vodka right into the bloodstream. Is that right? Is, Is it more I don't want it on my breath, or is it more I just want to get drunk fast? I think it's actually a combination of both. I think the issue really is that um, they they want to be able to do this at school. So if I use eye drops or, you know, other creative ways, gummy bears right now is really great. They they take the whole bag of gummy bears, soak them in alcohol, and then bring them to school and share them with everyone. And then what you have is you have a bunch of kids that are walking around acting like they're intoxicated. And depending on how much they're consuming, nobody really can tell what's going on with that. Um, the, my fear for that is as a grandmother, of course, I have grandchildren, and what if one of their older brothers and sisters did this and brought it home and the little kids got into it? Now what do you have? You have a child who is suffering from alcohol poisoning, possibly. Wow. Stacy Alfin, Herman Memorial Patient Recovery Center, uh, joining us this morning. A- as a recovering alcoholic, uh, I-, I think I have I can identify someone who is intoxicated, having been intoxicated myself quite a few times uh, before I got sober, and I tell this to my children. I say, listen, you, you know, you can't you can't BS a BSer. I, I'm going to be able to tell, but maybe not. I, I, will I be able to notice if my children have ingested alcohol if they're doing it in some of the ways you and I have discussed here this morning? Actually, I think that you have a benefit of um, being open about that and knowing that it's not out of the realm of possibilities. What we face at Memorial Hermann Prevention Recovery Center with our parents is often that they really didn't expect that their child would be doing this, and so therefore there's kind of some blinders on on that. What you're going to see, regardless as to how these children are ingesting it, is they're going to act like they're intoxicated, like something's just not quite right, and maybe a parent at first, if it's something new, is not going to be able to quite put their finger on it, but as a parent, and I've raised four kids and have all these other kiddos, you know, really, if it's not quite right, then it's not quite right, and as a parent, our job is to investigate and try to figure out what is going on. Stacy, one of the things that gets to me here is, I mean, it's one thing with the gummy bears, that's a social activity, but many of these other ways, it's very private. It's as if these kids are self medicated Medicating. Yeah, well, actually, you'd be really surprised. Um, you know, the eye drops they're going to share at school. They think it's really cool. It's a secret. Um, it's all of that um, endorphin, you know, that rush of I'm getting away with something. Mm-hmm. What they really are not thinking about because you know, why would they think about it, is the permanent damage that can be done. I mean, you look at eye drops, for instance, and all the damage that alcohol can do to any tissue of the body. If you leave your hand in alcohol for 10 minutes, you're going to see some serious effects. So can you imagine putting drops in your eyes or any other place in your body? I mean, it could be dangerous. No, you know, it's interesting because I was just, (laughs) it's just, it was the, it was, it was the drinking itself. 
itself, the glass, the tinkling of the ice, uh, going, you know, places to drink. And I know that was when I was older, but I mean, it was, uh, it was just mind boggling to me what kids are doing. I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised, Stacy. What should a parent do? How can they get a hold of you, uh, at Memorial Herman, the Patient Recovery Center, if they want to reach out and learn some more? Well, um, I would ask them to, especially for the adolescents, to please call our adolescent um, unit. And the number um, there is 713-329-7339. And any of the staff would be happy to help answer questions. Um, you know, if they want to have an assessment, we do free assessments for adolescents. Uh, just to give the parents an idea of, yes, your child is at risk, possibly abusing, you know, possibly there's a bigger problem. All right. Stacy, I thank you so much for your time and the, and the great work that you're doing there. Memorial Herman Patient Recovery Center. Stacy, Stacy Alfin joining us this morning as a, as a, as 11 and 12 year old child, I snuck booze out of my dad's bar. And I don't know if my parents knew I was drinking or not, but honestly, if you are someone that is from a family where alcoholism runs rampant and you are doing things like this, you are ingesting alcohol, you are on a fast track to a real bad life uh, and and I you know I can I can speak from uh from personal experience with that Stacy I thank you so much for your time this morning Well thank you guys so much have a great day